All right, everyone on the video, good after, good evening here to those in the audience, those on the video. Good day to you, whatever time of the day it is. But here it is Sunday night. It is October the 9th. Woo! Yeah, not to be confused with August, which I like to, I always like to switch those months around. One's hot, one's cool. I'm liking the cool. It is October 9th. It is 2022. It's a Sunday night. That means it's time for some more John. So as you guys see, we're just going to finish this chapter. We just got three verses. And uh, that's okay with me because I preached this morning, so I'm, I'm done talking. So we'll go through this and finish up the chapter. And like always, we'll read the verses and then uh, we'll pray. Uh, I say we just pray for the country. <laughs> just, my goodness. I just, like I said this morning, I, if, if, if Putin pushes the button, I don't blame him. <laughs> if, if it's the hand of God judging us, but at the same time, I don't believe God's done with us and we just need to pray for peace. And um, we'll pray for the peace of Ukraine. Um, that that uh the, that leader over there, they're about to give him the Nobel Peace Prize, but he said, "Well, we all need to get up and do a preemptive strike." Uh, that's not very peace. I don't know why where, where he's coming from on that. Um, I don't trust any of it. So we all can agree, people dying is not of God. God is the God of life, not the God of death. So let's pr pray for the peace of Ukraine. Let's pray for a. Uh, Let's pray for the peace of Russia. Let's pray for the peace of the world. Let's pray for the peace here. Amen. Mm -hmm. And pray for this country. So that's what we'll do tonight. So John eleven fifty five through 57. So we'll go ahead and read these verses. Here we go. And we will finish the chapter. And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think? Will he come to the feast? Now both the chief priest and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it that they might seize him. Let's pray. Lord, I just plead your blood over us. I ask, Lord, that you lead us and guide us in everything that's going on. Lord, I thank you that you got me through the last two days of being sick, and now I'm standing and well. Lord, I give you praise for that. Lord, we ask for the peace of Ukraine. We ask for the peace of, of, of Russia. Lord, we ask that they will come together and they will work this out. And Lord, if they need to redraw the line in Ukraine, fine. Lord, we just ask that some type of solution will happen. Lord, we ask that the truth of, of the nature of what's going on over there will be revealed and will, and will be known because the truth sets everyone free. Lord, I ask that you will be with this country, and Lord, we ask that we get this revival that we desperately need, because Lord, if you're not done with this country, it does need to be healed. We repent of our own sins, Lord. We humble ourselves, and we ask, Lord, that you heal our land. And Lord, I just ask tonight that your spirit speak to us right where we're at. Your spirit, breathe this out. And Jesus, you shed that blood so we can be in your spirit and hear what you have to say. Speak to your servants tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Yep. Quick little count. Make sure I got my little attendance done. Cool. All right. Verse 55, and the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Is the Passover a big deal? Yeah, it is. We just got the Ten Commandments at the church. We've been, we've been waiting all these years for them. They finally got here. No, I'm just joking. Yes, yes. What, what, how's, the, how's the preamble of the Ten Commandments start off? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Yeah, yeah. What happened in Egypt? Judgment. What happened to those who were of God? Passover. 
How, 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 did, the, how did the death angel pass over them? Because of the blood? <laughs> Is the Passover a big deal? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... The Passover was near. Well, this is the last one Jesus was going to attend. And then he was going to fulfill it. I'll spill the beans. Yeah, I got the beans spilled. Oh. Here we go. So, it was near. Uh, this is a verb. It was, it's, uh, it's in the uh, in perfect tense. So, he's just, there. so as the narrative moves forward, he's just talking about it in past tense. And, in, and also in the imperfect tense, just to say, this is what happened. So th- during this event, this is what's going on, is the way that verb's working. Uh, many people went up, right? That's how Mounts translates it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, King James goes, went up from there, went, f- went from there. They, yeah, to the country, up to Jerusalem. They get that in there later. So it's, it's a verb that's in the aorist tense, so just take it as a past tense. And then to purify, right? To purify themselves. Uh, Mounts um, shows that this is a verb. It's, it's aorist, it's active, but it's also subjunctive. I find that interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably causal because you, you have to do it. <laughs> and, you know, spiritual, maybe you're not clean, but, you know, it's, I can make a big deal about that, but I won't. Moving on. So we get the expectation that Jesus will make this Jewish feast as he's always done in the past. All right? From the very beginning of this book in 2.13, it says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Right? By the way, do you know why the Bible always says up to Jerusalem? They're talking about the incline. (laughs) Yeah. Not like us going up to Omaha because it's north, all right, and down to Oklahoma because it's south. No, it's because, yeah, it's the actual incline. So just throw that in there. Uh, 5 1. After, these, after, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. All right, 5 1. That's his reputation. 6 4. Now the, pass, now the Passover, a feast of the uh, Jews was near, going on. Jesus uh, lifted up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming towards him, and he said to Philip, um, you know, how many bread we should buy, but you continue to read on. Yeah, he gets there. Okay. 7.10. Now, the seventh chapter of, of uh, John, we're going to come back to several, a couple times here. What's important about that? Things got hostile, and people started looking for him. Same situation he's in right now. 7.10. But when his brothers had gone up, Then he also went up to the feast, not openly, as it were, in secret. All right? So, Jesus has been known to be at every festival, every Passover festival or any other festival. This is the the festival of tents, I believe. The booths, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Tabernacles. Yeah. 7-2 shows it. And... um, so he makes these feasts, but this la- one of these, he made it late. He was fashionably late, if you will. Not really fashionably late. He was listening to the Father when to show up because his life was in danger. And that's one thing that we've learned so far in the book of John. Jesus took direction from the Father what to do. Today, we take direction from the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's telling you not to go, don't go. If the Spirit's telling you to go and you've got peace to do something you know that that's the Spirit. So, yeah, that's, that's how we're led today. Jesus, moderate, um, he, he, he was the example of that. He, he, he showed it. So here we go. But he will be delayed. Why? For dinner. 12-2. I have to say, some people say, you can call me late, but don't call me late for dinner. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jesus didn't show up immediately to this one, just like the one back in 7. If you look at 12.2, And they made him supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Imagine that conversation. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus had a few things to do before he made the feast, uh, the, the Passover uh, festival. He had to stop and, and uh, hang out with his friends and, and his buddy who just came back from the dead. So... And something important happened there, right? I'm joking around about it, but something very significant happened, right? And an anointing for his death happened in in 12.7.
But Jesus said, let her alone. He's talking to Judas. She has kept this from the day of my burial. He was anointed for death. Is that important? Yeah. We wouldn't be here if he wouldn't have went to the cross. And then he'll go up to Jerusalem to upset the leaders who were there against him. 1219. The Pharisees therefore said to said amongst themselves, you see that you're accomplishing nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Well, if you can't beat him, join him. You're wrestling against God, you know. You'd think that'd be obvious, but, you know. All right. It took me a while to finally come in, so, yeah. Yeah. So we look at the wording of this. Many went up, right, from that area in which they were staying. And in, in, in the verse, it calls, calls it a country. Well, what, what they're talking about in verse 54 Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went up, to, up there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. So, where Jesus was at is becoming a ghost town because everybody's getting up to Jerusalem. They're getting up there to get themselves purified and get ready for the feast. What does he do? He goes up and stops in Bethany to be with his friends. All right, so that's how the narrative is moving forward. And, of course, they were going up there to fulfill, script, to, to fulfill Scripture in order to participate, or the way it says it, to purify themselves for the Passover meal. Well, why are they doing that? Well, it's biblical. In Numbers uh, 9, 6 through 12, this is where all this started. A couple people in the past had a problem, and Moses and the Lord got together and fixed it. 9, 6 through 12. Now there were certain men who were defiled by a human corpse so that they could not keep the Passover on the day. And they came before Moses and Aaron that day. And those men said to him, We have been defiled by a human corpse, and why are we kept from uh, presenting our offering to the Lord at this appointed time among the children of Israel? Then Moses said to them, Stand still, that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, if there is any uh, saying, if any of you or, uh, or your uh, posterity is unclean because of a corpse or is far away on a journey. Look at that. God gave them mercy. Well, you know, eventually they got exiled and spread around, right? Uh, on a way for journey, he may still keep the Lord's Passover. Well, that's nice. The Lord's very um, uh, convenient, right? He's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Merciful, Merciful, yeah, that's the word as well. Um, On the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight, they may keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread, with bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until morning, nor break one of its bones. According to the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. So God made it to where if you can't physically be at the feast, you can still honor him wherever you're at. Well, that, that brings you to the, the theology of the Spirit. Can we worship the Spirit here in Kansas? Well, we're not in the Holy Land. Well, he's all over the place. You can be wherever you need to be. There's another story in the Bible about this where people had trouble with, the, uh, with uh, not physically being there. If we go to Second Chronicles 30, 17 through uh, uh, 18. For there were many who assembled who were not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had, had charge of the slaughter of the Passover lamb for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to the Lord. And you're like, what's this about? Okay. They didn't get this purification done as they should have. Well, people say it's hard to see the, the, the grace in the Old Testament. Well, check it out. For the multitude of people from Ephraim and Manasseh and Issachar and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the, may the good Lord provide atonement for everyone. Can you cover a person in prayer when they're doing wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you guys enjoy worshiping the Lord that we have as grace? and mercy <laughs> some people think 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 our our relationship with god is rigid no it's not actually not it's really not but moving on 
So some argue that this Passover marks the second part of this gospel, since it is the last Passover Jesus will be at and starting his private ministry with his own. Yeah, that's true. That's true. This is a good marker in this, but a lot of people, they look at 13 on as the second part, and I agree with them, because this is leading us up to the close of the, of the first part, because Jesus is still going to do some public ministry. But yeah, we're coming up to the close of the second part, or the first part. So if you look at 12, 13, it says, no, yes, yes, you're right. Because 2.13 shows the beginning of it, which we've already read. Yeah. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Yeah, you're right. I thought it was 12.13. So the reason I cited that verse is that's the beginning of his public ministry. But after we get done with chapter 12, that is the end of his public ministry with the Gospel of John. So when we finally get the monitors, I'm going to... I think what we'll do is we'll watch the first uh, uh, project, uh, project Bible project video to remember what we went through, and we'll watch the second one to get us ready. And, and that might line up as I get back from, from, uh, from Colorado, which would be good. They'll give me a break and not have to worry about quickly coming up with something. At not the end of this week, but the end of the next week. I was, all get, I was getting myself ready to go. And then I realized, I looked at the, the calendar, oh, that's not till the end of next week, not this week. I was, <laughs> Guys, I'm already in Colorado. I'm gone. I'll see you. <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, we might do that. And for those on the video, yeah, you, you might not have one video, but it's all right. So anyways, back to this. We, we're going to divide it with the scholars, and I, I agree. Yeah, chapter 12 is definitely the closing of his public ministry. All right, and we see his glory was revealed, right? Did he reveal his glory? Yeah, he raised Lazarus from the dead, and now his death is sealed. His enemies hate him, and they want him dead. And like I've told people before, there are people in the world right now who want all of us in this room dead. Do we want them dead? Who works for the God of life and who works for the God of death? Your fruits will speak for who you are, for who you work for. And I was thinking about this morning, the sermon, you know, I was preaching, Jesus is the way and the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through him. We're going home to our heavenly Father. Everyone who wants us dead or comes against the church, they work for the Father of lies, and they're going to go to where the Father of lies is. And I thought about that point. There's always, it's, it's funny when you preach a sermon, more revelation just keeps coming to you. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps coming to you. And I thought about that. I said, oh, I'll share it tonight. So, yeah, yeah, we're going to go home to our Heavenly Father. But Jesus right now, going along with my sermon this morning, he's, ba he's making the way. He's blazing the trail for us to go down. All right. So when he raised Lazarus from the dead, back to uh, four, uh, 1140, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. He's talking to Martha. Did, did that happen? Yeah. But if we stop at verse 53, we see this. From that day on, they plotted to put him to death. His enemies could not deal with this stuff. And then we'll go to 1210 and we get this. But the chief police plotted to put Lazarus to death also. So here's the tension we're in now. Jesus' glory was revealed. More people chose him, but some did not. And what did they do? They plotted to kill him. And they're so angry now, they're ready to kill the guy who was just dead. I'm like, poor Lazarus, man. He's been through enough. Nothing like coming alive to God and people want to kill you now. Actually, that is the Christian faith, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm alive. I'm awake. I know who Jesus is. Wait a minute. People don't like me now. What happened? <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. He, he is. Lazarus is an example. He is an example to us. All right. Moving on. 56. And they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. 
saying and basically saying to one another, "What do we? What do you think that he will come to the feast?" All right. So, so they sought Jesus, or Mounts puts it, they were looking for again in perfect tense, um, air, um, uh, active voice. So that that's the event going on, and then they were talking. Right, they spoke to, amongst themselves. They were talking is how Mounts translates that again in perfect tense. So here's the event taking place. That's how the Greek grammar works. It's giving you the event. All right. And then this is interesting. As they stood, or Mounts translates this participle, as they were standing, he, he puts it in the perfect, uh, the, the Greek is in the perfect tense in active voice. I don't know what to make of that. It's just interesting. All right. And then uh, uh, they said, what do you think? Mounts translates the same way. Do you think? Present and actively. So they're talking amongst themselves. And then, uh, will he not come to the feast? Will he not come? Uh, he will not come is how uh, Mounts translated. Again, it's, it's, uh, it's aorist, it's active, but this time it's subjunctive. All right. So they were questioning I wonder if he's actually going to show up here. I wonder if he is actually going to make it this time. They were wondering. They were questioning amongst themselves. Do they have reason to do that? Yeah, because now everybody knows they want him dead. It's common knowledge now. All right, going along. So this scene is repeated before, right? Back to chapter 7. Let's look at 7, 11 through 13. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said that he is good. Others said, No, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for the fear of the Jews. So you guys see that this scene repeated itself. All right, moving on with the notes. And they were asking themselves these questions because of the order of the Pharisees and the chief police. Uh, police. Yeah, might as well. The chief FBI agents. All right, anyways. Uh, the chief priest in the next verse because of the command they give. And we'll get to that. All right. So you see the scene repeating itself. All right. And then these many, back in 55, right, they all went up, were not seeking him out of hostility, just like the people back in 7. 7.1, after these things, Jesus uh, walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea because he, the Jews sought to kill him. And then you jump back to what we were just looking at. Uh, 12, and there was much complaint among, uh, among the people concerning him. Some said he is good, others said no, on the contrary, he deceives the people. What the scholar was saying here is, you see that they're actually pretty neutral. You know, the, the, it's not the crowd who wants him dead. The crowd is still... Some of them, the verdict's still out. Is he of God or not, right? But the leaders do. So they were speaking this out of curiosity as they stood in the temple. And now, also everyone else from, from all over the nation of Israel would be asking the same question, right? So people are still wondering, is this guy legit or not? What is going on with this guy? I wonder if he's even going to show up. We know that our leaders want him dead. That's the scene being painted for us. All right, verse 57. Here it is. Both the chief priest and the Pharisees had given command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it and they might seize him. All right. So the chief priests have, have, and the Pharisees have given, right? That's the... Uh, that's the uh, verb. Um, Mounts translates the same way. Now this is this verb is the pluperfect. There's that tense again. All right, or how some people call it the past perfect. So, what are they talking about? They're talking about the secret council meeting, because that that verb means the backstory. All right. It's already been declared by the secret council, a part of the Sanhedrin, that they need to kill him. See how the Greek works? Yeah, it's very, it's very precise. All right, if anyone knew, 
right? Mounts translates the same way. It's heirs active and, of course, subjunctive mood. It's a possibility they might know where he's at. And if they do, they want to talk to him. And then where Jesus was, or he was, is how uh, King James puts it, presently and actively. They want to know right now where he's at. Okay. And then uh, he should report it, or he should let them know. Again, it's another uh, verb that's heirs, active, and subjunctive. They should. That's, they throw the word should in there because it's a, it's a subjunctive mood. And then, of course, that they might seize him or they might arrest is how Mounts puts it again. It's a verb. It's active, and it's heirs, active, and subjunctive. So that's why the word might is in there. It's a possibility that they can get this done. All right. Moving on with that. Their command was already understood and not surprising to the reader. Why is that? Because if you're just reading through the Gospel of John, you've watched the suspense, the suspense build and build and build, knowing that these people are, going, are wanting him dead. It is getting more hostile and more hostile towards him. All right. So the command was understood that, that, that their resolve was to kill him. All right. We can go back to 47 and 53. The chief priest... And the Pharisees gathered a council, not the council, not the whole Sanhedrin, it's a council, right? And said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. And they get down to 53, here's their resolve. Then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. So this is no surprise to the reader. It's just the suspense is building. And... He was in this tension before, back in chapter 7, which I've shown you several times already, moving on. We do see that, that, that these orders not, are not really carried out by the crowd that seems to be neutral. Again, let's look at 12.9. Now, many of the Jews knew that he, he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So, we see the crowd still being neutral, right? People are still making up their mind about this guy. Well, if you read on to, into Acts, people were starting to finally make up their mind completely about him because we see some of the Pharisees come in, right? So, as the crowd before was neutral, again, verse 56 says, and they sought... They sought Jesus and spoke among themselves, you know, st standing in the temple asking themselves, what do you think and will he come to the feast? And then 7, uh, 11 through 12, we already read as well. They're like, he's good. No, I think he deceives the people. They're just talking, but they're not hostile to him. It's just the leaders. All right. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a point about that. Let me go ahead and make that point again. The sad part of the gospel is the very people who were supposed to recognize him missed it. But there is another thing about the gospel. You read through all four of them, you'll see something. And this is sad. And this goes along with all the evil stuff I'm learning about. Some people know that Jesus is the answer and they're purposely fighting. The people... The leaders that actually knew that Jesus was the Messiah, you know what they were actually saying to God? We see you brought your Messiah, but we don't like this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that goes along with this teaching and warning. Don't ever speak against a leader of a church just because you don't like them. <laughs> if he's not your cup of tea, go to another church, maybe. But don't speak against someone. Yeah. If God's using them for something, that's a whole other rebuke and uh, warning for another time, but it fits right here. We'll move on. But yeah, it is, but it is clear again that his life is in danger, and the, for the reader, the suspense continues to rise. All right? And that's where the scholar's notes end. So, this is the one thing I can give you out of all this, what we've been reading, and everything else. For the reader that doesn't know what's going to happen next, or maybe they do because they read the other three Gospels, for us, we already know this is his last Passover. 
For those of us who know the gospel narrative, we know that this is his last Passover. But like I was talking about, was the Passover a big deal? Oh yeah. Is it a big deal to us? Yes, it is. And he, he, he is the one who will fulfill this Passover, not just for the Jews, but for all humanity. So that's the lesson for tonight. So for those on the internet, we'll let you go.